One of the big headlines, certainly for the UK, is that the UK approach, which is actually delaying the first and the second dose, for example, for the AstraZeneca vaccine by 10 to 12 weeks, still has 82 percent efficacy. How much of a good news is that? I think it's great news. Um, I, I think we'd like to see some clinical trials roll out and some of the data coming through from these real world populations that are starting to get the dose. But that's exactly where this is coming from. So in particular, knowing that that healthcare workers who have had COVID and gone through that experience mount this strong immune response is really promising to see. Lauren, I know there's moving averages of statistics, but just what you've seen in the last number of days are we actually rolling over to a better set of statistics? I definitely think that's the hope. I think whenever we start to see the numbers drop, there's this concern that um, people will start to relax their behaviors, start to take fewer precautions, and then we'll see that spike again. Um, but the hope here is that we actually are um, getting a hold on the virus, both with the social distancing measures, with a better understanding of masking, and then with these vaccines rolling out. You know. Um, it's really just great to see over 100 million doses of vaccine going into the global population. And so um, that is definitely going to start to make a dent in, yeah. in these statistics. And not that I want you to create policy on Bloomberg surveillance, but what is your guesstimate of when the age barrier comes down? I don't know where we are now as a general statement. I'll say 65. When do we migrate to 59 or to 49? I think a lot of that depends on the, the vaccine supply. So as more and more vaccines come online, it's going to you're going to start to see those numbers go down into the lower age ranges where um, the healthier, younger, less affected populations can start to access vaccine. And then um, we can start to see reopening activities that are safe and still protective of the broad population. I think what we would like to see is that happen in the next couple of months here. Um, but that's, that completely depends on that vaccine rollout and vaccine uptake, um, as well as people maintaining those social distancing behaviors. Uh, Lauren, where does the next pandemic come from and are we better prepared for it? I think we've learned a lot of really hard lessons and I think we continue to learn them from this pandemic. Um, I would say any time that you can apply lessons that you've learned from experience and from practice, um, you're going to be better prepared. That being said, you know, the next pandemic could come right on the heels of this one, and we have to make sure that we take the time to um, nurse our healthcare systems globally back to life um, and, and our economies back to life. And, and that's going to be a real challenge. So I, I think the next pandemic you could see looking very similar to this one. Um, you could see it looking like an influenza virus or even a non-respiratory pathogen. And, and the key will be that we have to remember how important those global surveillance systems are, how, how important it is to continue to look for the next pandemic. Um, and that might actually even help us avoid the next pandemic, which would be a huge step in the right direction. Uh, are we looking for the next pandemic or are we you know, too focused on stopping this one, which is already a, a huge Herculean task? Yeah, I think it's a mix of both because I think a lot of the people who um, their day-to-day -day jobs prior to COVID-19 were, you know, looking at data, looking at specimens, looking for that next pandemic. There's so many people whose jobs have reverted to just focusing on COVID-19. And, and we were definitely worried about that during flu season, during uh, many of the natural disaster seasons globally, uh, that we weren't going to have the public health workforce to do that hard work to identify these um, the next pandemic or the next global threat. And so um, building that workforce back up is going to be hugely important. We've seen a lot of people leave the workforce in public health and, and making sure that we're doing the work of looking at the specimens that we're collecting, building the global infrastructure for surveillance and really improving data sharing, which has been a huge problem globally in this, in this pandemic. Those are the next steps. So I, I think we are looking. I think it's just a matter of maintaining that looking even when um, we're working so hard to fight this pandemic that's literally at our doorstep.